anyway, hello everyone and welcome back, uh, if you're listening. Uh, uh, we are the nerds. I'm Cage. That's Chair. We're still here, but also Chair. back. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, we are we are recording back to back. So uh, we yes. um, we are double, double teaming it. Yeah. Um, this episode we're going to talk about Amazon shit, uh, like Amazon Prime shit. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about Fallout, the the TV series, uh, the Amazon Prime adaptation of the video game uh but before that just some other amazon stuff because they're doing a whole bunch of things i mean not only like i think they found a lot of success with the boys um right um and now they've moved into video game adaptations with fallout and i think they found it to be quite successful um and so they're doing they just announced this last week i think um they're doing a tomb raider live action show um, yep. and it's going to be written or show run or something by Phoebe, Phoebe Waller bridge, which I don't really care who's running it. As long as it's good, I don't care, but obviously that's going to make some people really mad and say that she ruined Indiana Jones five. And then other people are going to be like, Oh, uh, who fucking cares? Okay. Just, if you want to watch it, watch it. Um, but Amazon is also, uh, I believe it's them that are doing a live action Spider-Man noir show. Um, so people, oh, man, what I can get this, that Batman beyond animated series from the, the guys that made beyond the spider verse. That's all I care about now. Yeah. I mean, on the tomb Raider topic, apparently Netflix is also doing an animated tomb Raider show, which comes out I, this year. I, this is like poor gamer talk for me, but I, I am, um, I have never watched tomb Raider. Never watched it. Never played it. Never played Tomb oh. Raider. I never played. I never played any of the games. Not even like the newer ones that came out because I play old Star Wars MMORPGs. Well, <laughs> and like Helldivers two and Baldur's Gate three, and that's really about it. I played so. um, the original like Tomb Raiders, like the old old ones, where like it was kind of like Temple Run. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're just like running through and jumping over spikes. What's up, dog? What's up? Jesus. My dog is on my lap, and he loves me. So, um, you know, for That's some reason, funny. he's, like, sad today. So I, I thought I'd just, like, you know, let him hang out. And uh, now he's trying to lick my face while I'm talking. So. Dogs. That's what they do. Yeah. Do you want to say something, Chase? No? All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I played the original, like, Tomb Raiders. Like, my, my dad had them on PC. So um, when I was, like, a kid. I would play those. And then uh, I tried to play, like, I think on, like, PS2, one of them. Uh, and it, it was pretty good. Uh, I enjoy it. I, I think it's a, a lot fun of people, kind of game. A lot of people have positive things to say about them. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and also just, like, going to watch Angelina Jolie and Tomb Raider as a kid. Yep. You know, it, it gave me a, it, it, you know, it was a fun experience. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's that, um, Spider-Man Noir for people who, who don't know just off the name, uh, he was in the Across the Spider-Verse movies, um, and, uh, you know, he's voiced by Nicolas Cage, uh, and apparently Nicolas Cage is going to play him in the live action version, so, uh, there's that, (laughs) that's in the works, um, and then they're also doing... Uh, obviously, The Rings of Power Season 2 uh, comes out in August, yep. end of August, um, and a trailer was released. You watched the trailer. I watched the trailer. Yep. Um, the Rings of Power <laughs> The Rings of Power is one thing where I know no matter what side you're on, you, like, you care for some reason. Like People who hate yeah. the show and everything it stands for, they listen to these conversations. Like... It, uh, like not to give too much away but like when i look at the top 10 episodes of our podcast that people have listened to like with the most listens top 10 it's rings of power the lord of the rings appendixes the rings of power uh season review the rings of power trailer she hulk uh review like no matter like if people love it or hate it like they listen to the conversations about it either because they want to listen and be like, ah, you guys are fucking idiots and you, you're pissing all over Tolkien's grave. Or they want to be like, Oh look, people with like relatively like normal takes on things. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, 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 did you like the trailer? Is that why you're saying it's I hype? Did. I thought, I, yeah, I thought it was pretty hype. But also, like, you know, what's hype is not, not going to be good. Um, so I'm just trying not to get too hype. But, you know. Well, uh, is, yeah, I mean, I watched the trailer, um, and really when I watched it, I, I disassociated from it because, um, trailers are pointless to me. Like, I don't care how good the trailer is. It doesn't mean anything. And then, you know, it shows you little things, little glimpses. Yeah. Cool. The three rings, but this all, all the stuff they kind of showed us was implied from the first season, you know, like the storylines they're going with. And if you, if you know what they have the rights to, which is pretty much the Lord of the Rings and the appendices, uh, like, you know, they're limited in their storytelling ability. So they're going to have to make things up or do like fan fiction stuff or whatever, which is, you know, what it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, but you kind of know, like, you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to get Sauron, you know, showing up as Anatar, you know, in, you know, to, to do the things and, you know, get the rings made. Um, and then, you know, Sirden, Kyrden, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, Kyrden the Shipwright. Um, sorry, Celebrim um, Bor, brother. There's too many characters. Okay, that's all I'm saying. But like, we know, we know the rings will be made. We know that you know the three, the Elvish rings, um, will not be allowed to be corrupted by Sauron. Uh, even though when he makes the One Ring, like they're still bound to its power. Um, this is this is what the season's gonna be about. Um. Yeah, you know, and uh, and also Numenor potentially, like my my guess is by the end of the season, Sauron will be in prison in Numenor, and season three will be about um, him worming his way into the ears of the Numenorians uh, and Alfarazan and all that stuff, which ultimately leads to the destruction of Numenor because he convinces them to take ships across the sea to confront um, the Valar and why why are we mortal and you're not and you're immortal and you have all this power and blah 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 uh which then takes uh valinor off of earth um and they destroy numenor uh so yeah. th- you know we know what's all coming but you know the the appendices don't give us all 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 of that uh there's references to the destruction of numenor though in the lord of the rings and um, the line of kings uh, of Numenor that ultimately leads to Aragorn, so we can get all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah, uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. But uh, to me, again, I when I watch the trailer, I'm not like, oh, this means this and this means this. Like, you know, I'm just like, I'm just gonna wait and watch the show, and then we'll talk about it, and then people will either call us dumb fuck idiots or just normal people with normal takes. So, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that Amazon is doing is a Dune prequel called Dune Prophecy. Uh, Chair here is the big Dune fan. He knows all the Dune things. This series takes place 10,000 years before the events of the yeah, Dune movies. So it's, it's set more commonly what most people would, most lay people would know if they're like more exposed to Dune is the Butlerian Jihad, which is when like, um, I, you know, it's like, you know, there's a lot of weird religious undertones that are always present in Dune and stuff like that. So essentially what happened is like all the super religious people like in the Dune universe came together and like had an uprising against like thinking machines and computers and stuff like that because they used to have robots alongside them in their society for a very long time. But then they like became super afraid of them because, of the, you know, they had like they went through a very religious, super religious like awakening in like, you know, the Dune universe because um, everybody started doing hard drugs all the time because their society was great because of machines. <laughs> so, you know, um, so they, like, had her uprising against machines. And I'm sure, like, I, I have personally haven't read the Butlerian Jihad. A lot of people say it's not very good. It's it's written by Frank Herbert's son. I don't know if it's good or not because I haven't read it myself personally. A lot of people hate – a lot of people always hit on them, though. A lot of people say that they – he just – makes it makes it a little weirder but to me like the do movies books were only weird because chapter house was about a bunch of like you know sex assassins that could kill you by gripping your their your penis you would have started having doing the sex with them and then they would flex their 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 vagina a certain way when your penis was in it and you would instantly die so yeah that was the thing that was present in doing chapter house so i don't know how they could make that weirder um but apparently they did so, you know, I, I, and they probably just make, you know, he probably just alludes to a bunch of things that are going to happen in the later Dune books, you know. Um, yeah. Well, so from what I got from the synopsis or whatever, like, it, it's about 
the show is about like the forming of the Bene Gesserit and like probably um, yeah. and and uh, and how they gathered so much influence and infiltrated all the houses and whatever. So um, oh, yeah, 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 that's that's what I've gathered that it's about. So uh, is it something you're going to watch? Uh, I mean, maybe if we should, if we, if we want to for the show. Well, I mean, is it is it something uh, on the face of it that interests you? Um, kind of, and kind of not. Like mm. you know, I am like I'm glad there's something Dune out there, but I don't. I struggle to see the point of it, and I don't know why Dune can't stay as the movies themselves. But maybe they just had a bunch of set pieces and stuff they wanted to reuse, and they thought they could squeeze a like you know a, a show that could flip a good like you know turn on it, you know. Yeah, they they probably use reuse a lot of the settings and a lot of the outfits and clothing and stuff, and uh, hopefully it'll be good and not shit. <laughs> yeah, that's that all is... I could say. And 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 we'll watch it, and yeah, I'll watch it if you want me to for the podcast. Like I'm really falling behind on anime here. I got that's what I'm gonna be doing tonight. It's probably going to bed early so I can catch up on watching a whole bunch of new anime and shit. Um, because you know I'm a huge anime fan, and <laughs> you just. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, it's hard for some people to sit through it, so I'm not going to ask you to sit through my, you know, my favorite anime and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, well, it's just uh, gotta watch it, gotta watch anime. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that'll bring us to Fallout. Um, Fallout. So... I watched episode one last night. What? what? <laughs> Didn't you watch the whole series? I did, but I watched episode last night with our good friend Rio. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we're gonna spoil it all. Oh, so... Oh, my gosh. It came by so fast. I didn't read the name. Soulless Shadow. I th- Oh, my God. It's a bot, isn't it? It's a bot. It's a bot. Hello. Sorry for bothering you. I want to offer you a promotion. Okay. Yep. It's a bot. Bot. Go to Streamrise. Bot. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So, if you haven't watched Fallout, we're going to spoil it. All of it. We're not just talking about one episode, okay? Major Fallout spoilers involved. Yeah. So, um... Before we get into it, though, uh, I'll ask you, um, do you feel like it's it's a good adaptation, a true adaptation? Do you feel like they took a lot of liberties? Do you feel like they um, they honored the games well enough? Uh, how do you feel overall about it? Uh, overall, I feel really good about it. I feel like that they did the game a good service and that they, they you know, also were willing to go and do their own thing with what was there, which I appreciate. Um you know, a lot of people are complaining about what it does to the Fallout canon and stuff like that, but the Fallout canon isn't fixed because all the games have, like, five different endings depending on the choices your character makes throughout the process of the story. Uh, three of which are anarchy endings, which means you just go around and you kill everybody, you nuke everything, and everybody's dead all everywhere because you're, like, a force of chaos and anarchy, and mm-hmm. you just swept through Tame and murder. Like, that's, like, literally... In Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4, there are endings describing, like, if you kill everybody, it'll give you an ending where it's, like... And so, like, the Wastelander wandered through and murdered everybody. <laughs> like, that, it'll just say that. So, you know, like, I, so I threw that out. I threw all those complaints out the window. And uh, I just think it was really good. I think Lucy's a really strong character. She's not, like, you know, the kind of character that you and I hate, who's just, in, like, real enjoys her so far. So that's good. Um, she's not, like, you know, just, just win it all kind of chick that, like, just, you just is easy to hate on. She's actually very, like, has a lot of personality and, like, normal things and acts like a human being. Um, and you know, all the characters have that. And, yeah. uh, I, I like all the props and the set pieces were awesome. I love the power armor. It looked fantastic. It looked really good. Um, you know, I, I know it looked a little bit cheesy and a little stiff. Some people said that, but there's no way you're going to get like a hundred percent amazing power armor, like, you know, without, with, with practical effect, with, like without CGI. So I'm glad that they just went with full practical and made it look as good as they could, you know? Yeah. So, um, and yeah. uh, the weapons are, all the weapons are great i like how like even in the first episode right she like gets knifed and then she pulls out a healing item from the game called a stim pack it's called a stim pack and you just inject yourself with it and yeah. it just kills you you know there doesn't need to be this whole like well we need to go through like and yeah in the game like you know you can find some obscure log talking about like oh the stim pack uses blah 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 blah. like you know it pulls out some comic book stuff to make it sound interesting or whatever but yeah it's just supposed to work it's supposed to, it's supposed to work you know like it just it just works like it heals you. So I'm glad that they do they would just do things like that. You know the items just did item stuff. Um, yeah. I, I liked all the characters. I don't think there was a character I didn't like. And uh, yeah, you know I just thought um I like the dog stuff. You know me I'm a huge fan of dogs. So yeah. like you know seeing 
that whole dog arc the care there's one of the dog one of the characters is just a dog yeah so you know and everybody loves a dog and it's great to, it's, it's pretty badass stuff man yeah um i know like like what dune one of your complaints was like they like like you thought it was a very good sci-fi movie but like the credit you give it is because it was made more for the masses and less for the book fans do you feel like it's similar with fallout or do you feel like they balance both you know being no, true I, I would say this would be something only for video game fans because of how intensely violent how intensely and graphic graphically violent it can be sometimes like it, it's present in almost every single episode characters oh, are it's like incredibly dying violent and, like, yeah bullets exploding violent. inside people yeah like yeah. you know shooting some guys shoving a uh, gun through another guy's like gaping wound and then using it to gun on people down behind them like you know there's a lot of a lot of violent stuff there a lot yeah, of violence it's incredibly violent yeah um, so I, I think that like I would never like recommend this show to like my parents or something like that because of how violent it is like straight up you know okay. so and, and it sucks like you know we can't share like you know the fallout of a video game that I love deeply and I've been playing since I was like my Xbox 360 days which I got like 12 or 13 years ago now where I first played Fallout 3 on the Xbox um, you know but it is, is what it is man <laughs> yeah I feel like they definitely um, created a story that is like kind of more mass appeal because it has those kind of mystery elements to it and they yeah they... I, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put some fallout spoilers in here like you know vault tech being behind the great war is like a kind of like a sub story that's like hidden like you know there's like a you can pick up in the in the game you can pick up all these items and stuff like that that really like deepens your understanding of like the world and stuff which is why i know a lot of things like you know like when the bombs fell because all the clocks are stuck on like i think it's like october 11th uh or october 13th or something like that mm. um and it's like it's like 3 p.m it's like 3 p.m eastern or like you know 11 p.m uh 11 p.m pst all the clocks in the game are stuck to a specific time so that's really mm. cool um unless it's unless it's new vegas because they reused assets so all the clocks are set in the east, in the east coast time but they could, did confirm later that actually they're supposed to be set to like you know the pacific standard time when the bombs drop yeah um so you know you find these bits of lore like in the different vaults and eventually you can piece together that vault tech was probably behind instigating the you know the great war when um you know they're they were behind instigating like the in you know tr trying to re like you know essentially reinvent society because they thought that like you know the nuclear apocalypse is like the reset button or whatever you know yeah. um but as of course in the game like shows like that was a horrendous idea and like even they couldn't maintain control over or, like they didn't understand how crazy the world would get or something like that you know yeah all well, this kind of stuff while you were watching the show did you feel like you had an idea of like where certain plot threads were going or like what yeah, certain I, things I, meant I, I, yeah yeah, I did. Um, you know, except from the NCR stuff, the only thing is I saw since we saw at the end, I guess this will be like, so we're doing like a full series coverage right now, right? We're not yeah. going to do episode by episode. Okay. Well, we can go um, through. I mean, just like uh, synopsis maybe, maybe of later the episodes, we, but. Yeah, maybe we can do that later, though. Sure. Log, I need to log in, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I, I think that um, with the showing of New Vegas, there are a lot of us that think that maybe the, the NCR ending for New Vegas was canon and that they made the and they made New Vegas the capital of the NCR, which is what happens in the game. Um, and Sadie Shands is like, you know, it's like the it's it's like the unofficial capital of like, you know, the NCR. It's like the legacy capital, you know, it's like yeah. they, it's like they move they move the capital to New Vegas because it's like more it's just more cent it's powered like, you know, it's, it's centered like in a bigger, better place, like, you know, for them to project power. Sure. Um, and it's also got all of like these crazy machines in it because for those of you who don't know in New Vegas, uh, Mr. House, who is super cool. That was my favorite reference in the game was seeing Mr. House. Uh, he's the CEO of Robco. Uh, he was a dude with a mustache. You saw him for a few seconds. Um, yeah. He, I wish they could have gotten him. Oh, yeah. yeah I know I what you're talking they, about. A really nice suit. I really wish they could have gotten him like a nicer outfit maybe. He was um, the one that like, like Cooper like, Howard no, or sorry, like no. he didn't really want to talk to, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, I wish um, – I wish they could have gotten a better name actor for him, but that is what it is what it is. I was just happy that he was there, you know, uh, but Mr. House is like, uh, he, def he built like a defense thing to defend Vegas from the bombs dropping. Mm -hmm. And that's why also more importantly than this, Hoover dam is still operable as a, as a dam. And it's also one of the last freshwater reserves in the world. Um, so in that whole area so it's like super it's like super logistically important area, like in the fall universe. Cause it's like, you know, they think about these things, you know, um, yeah well i mean like they, they do a lot of like you know tropey things right like the fish out of water kind of thing um because like the people in the vaults are all just like these people who have no fucking idea like that there's even like a world that's inhabitable out there 
Yeah, you know, or they they don't, or they do know there's a world that's inhabitable. Like they're all told the story, like okay, you guys are going underground because the apocalypse happened and you're going to come above, but they don't know the experiments are going to be like you know ran on them and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like so for me, like watching this as someone who never played the games, like you know, obviously Lucy is very endearing. You like Lucy, um, mm. and and the ghoul is really cool. You like the ghoul, you know. Um, uh, and then the Brotherhood people, like, you just don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like, what is their whole purpose? Until the actual, like, last episode, then I get it, right? Like, like it, it all, it clicked to me. I'm like, oh, okay, like, their entire, their entire purpose is to, like, maintain what vault Tech wanted, right? Like, they, they are, like, agents of vault Tech essentially, where, like, yeah. they, you know, they're, they're trying to prevent, you know, things like they're trying to prevent well, no, like you know they want to make it is kind of silly like you know the thing that's another thing about fallout is important like it is kind of silly you know like the 50s aesthetic makes everything seem kind of silly um you know so they want to make like the perfect they want to breed was it they said like the perfect super manager or whatever the hell you know so they're slowly waking vault tech members so they can like selectively breed them with like you know specific individuals and stuff like that um yeah yeah it, well just, yeah uh, so all the vault tech people are in cryo freeze or some shit uh, yeah. So did you see that coming, like the whole Vault Thirty One thing, where you like hyper aware that, like, you know, like was there a mystery no. there for you? Vault or? Thirty Vault Thirty One is a new vault. Um, it is mentioned. It is mentioned. Vault. Uh, it's one of the. There, it's mentioned in, in the things. Um, it's like the you know. They could, well, I thought Vault One was supposed to be where all the Vault Tech people were, but I don't know. Oh, okay. It's hard. It's it's really hard to tell. Like I can't remember because there's also I didn't play Fallout One and Two, but I really played the shit out of three, four, three New Vegas and four. Which do give a lot of like you know lore tidbits about what's going on in the world, but all Fallen One and Two just give a lot more better. And and this game, I think that this specific show was more structured around Fallout One more than anything because Fallout One is the more California area, like you know the Sadie Shands or the um, Vault City or uh, you know the ne Necropolis. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you don't know what Necropolis is, like you know it's a society of ghouls. Uh, they their freaking experiment for their vault was. The vault door would malfunction and be slightly cracked open and let the radiation in, and they all turn into like zombies and they form this like basically pretty cool society where everything's pretty chill <laughs> because they're immune to the because they're while well, they look like you know horrible radiated zombies, uh, they don't need to eat or drink anymore, and also they can like you know they're immune to radiation and they can live in this new wasteland, you know. And it the only, the only thing that sucks is they can't reproduce. That's like the main problem with ghouls. But other than that, like you know, it's just uh the necropolis is like I, I read a lot about fall one because fall one sucks to play oh, okay. i don't know what else to say Games it's, it's an old really game long. right it's a very old game right we're talking dos here brother like a very old game like it came out on freaking floppy disks okay mm. um so it, it, it's just um it's uh it's it's, it's a rough one to get through <laughs> I, I don't know how else to describe it like everything's rng based it, you can dump stats, but then you get a lot of things locked out, locked out it, that you can experience. And I, I don't know. I just didn't. I, I, I tried playing it a lot, but I, I could, it was just a really tough nut to crack. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so uh, essentially, what is the beef between the vault people and the wasteland people? Like, um, there is no beef, but like the thing is, is that like, it's, so, it's based off of like you know this kind of like comical like interpretation of like race like you know classism and like racism because they think like the above ground people they've all been mutated slightly by radiation and then the people in the vaults think that they're pure. Yes. They think that they're like they think that they they're like you know not um like you know not violated by like their their genes haven't been. Well, they're, or they're also much less violent and like right like they they don't have to fight there are a couple vault there are a couple vaults that are pretty fucked up i, I wouldn't really well, talk about i wouldn't really shoot off the cuff like that unless you knew okay like, listen, the details listen. Of we don't know the, okay <laughs> watching the show you don't like they they portray it as like a utopia right like living yeah. in the vault that, like that, you all live together you all work together the, those specific vaults are portrayed as utopias, but specific. I uh, eventually they'll probably well, show. Well, yeah, like, and then the other vault, up. the vault they end up going to with the weird religious people who get all naked for some reason. Like, okay, it's, yeah, it's like an old grief, experimental grief, grief shit. Top, topless grief therapy. Yeah. Yeah. You see, see, that was like the end of a vault. Like, you know, you saw like all the evil things that were going on inside it to its residence. You know. Um, and eventually that vault got ran out. Like, you know, those people all left and then these NCR people moved in. Like, you know, and they like made up a, like a nicer society because they were all ravaged from the horrors of war. So that that's not a really good example of a vault either. 
you know, yeah, again, like these but, vaults, like the there was vault, one vault where there was one vault where it was like literally one dude and 1000 women, dude. And it was like really fucked up. Like it was really like, you know, I know you think it's like, oh, wow, I'm going to have sex all the time. But it was actually like really messed up what happened in that vault. And then there was one vault. There was a thousand dudes and one chick. So like, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, yeah, there's a lot of weird vaults. There's a lot of weird vaults. Like there's a vault where they decide who their leader is based on who the best gambler is. That's like, you know. Cause then like, there's, there's all kinds of, there was all kinds of crazy vaults, dude. I'm telling you, like all right. they can definitely show. So they definitely each show vault is like a different kind of society. Got it. Got a it. Different experiment. It's but, an experiment. It's a societal well, yeah, experiment. Yeah. But yeah. my, so based on this show, right? Like vault 33 is like kind of utopian. Like they all work for each other, live for each other. Right. And then vault 32, I imagine was the same until they learned about, fault 31 and then like they just started going crazy um because like they had all been lied to um and uh then yeah i mean fucking this moldover lady who has got to be like three thousand years old or some shit um how is she alive <laughs> was she cryo yeah, frozen yeah she, she, yeah, she could have been cryo frozen for all we know she yeah. could have been a vault tech executive that like d didn't like what was going on yeah, and then and then you got the science guy, the science guy you think is so important and like gets it gets his head chopped off, um, yeah. who, who, so he, he does what's it called? Liquid something fusion, some shit. Cold, cold fusion. There cold you go. Fusion, yeah. Cold fusion. So he what discovers it or or makes it work and then he implants it in himself, um, or something like that. Like a because chip he understands. Like it's the best yeah, way to like restore a, power to the to the world or to a city or I don't know. All right. Well, that's the whole point of the show, right? Is like Moldova, Mold, whatever. She wants to um, she wants to use cold fusion essentially to rebuild society. The vaults don't want that to happen because it'll lose the money, right? So like Lu Lucy's mom, she discovers the world above. And meets Moldover and like, you know, kind of gets her eyes opened. And then as a result, um, fucking dumb fuck Lucy's dad, being a member of vault Tech, uh, drops a nuclear bomb on Shady Sands. Yeah. Like, so, so not only did vault Tech destroy the world, like, they have the capability and the resources still to continue bombing the surface anytime they don't like something that might potentially lose them money? Or am I misunderstanding something? Sorry, my dad came in the room and started talking to me. Um, yeah, you know, I, the nuke thing was very a little bit of an intense decision, but again, like, you know, they've been, they throw the nukes around a lot in the games, so it wasn't, like, you know, too out of the opinion for me that, like, you know, they found, like, an old world nuke silo and they but, armed it and they launched it. But why it. are they nuking? Is it is it to protect their profits? Like, no, well, I, no, no, no. Because they're not making no, money I, anymore. Uh, didn't the Brotherhood of Steel, wasn't one, aren't they the ones who nuked Shady Sands? I thought that was the I, I whole was, thing. I was under the impression, like, the that uh lucy's dad told him to do it or like he did it oh remember because i mean because the the brotherhood was um they were there to like you know they rescued uh that one dude who became a brotherhood yeah. member maybe they were there to check it out maybe they you know they could i could see, i could see that happening potentially i would have to go back and rewatch that episode and like see specifically what they said so i know they found like lucy's mom as like a ghoul yeah they found her as here. a ghoul um yeah, uh, I don't know it, but yeah, they, like Hank tracked down. Hold on, hold on. Who, uh, uh, yeah, Rose, the mom, left Vault Thirty Three with her children. Hank tracked her down and was responsible for the nuclear bombing of Shady Sands, turning Rose into a feral ghoul. So. Um, yeah, he he bombed Shady Sands, which makes Lucy sad because Lucy likes Maximus, and Maximus was there when it got bombed and lost everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I liked I liked their friendship. Yeah, I did too. But um, brother, when 
like, listen, Maximus, when a woman says you want to you want to copulate and you say no, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Lucy was all for it. She was like, hey, ready to ready to do the thing. And he was like, nah, I'm good. I'm I'm all right. I ain't doing none of that. Um, but then he was all willing to go live with her after. So, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's an interesting like show for sure because like you get all these different kinds of society kind of things, like you said, like a lot of the experimentation. But like, you know, you get these different perspectives and different views on the world and different you know ways to look at things. Like some people are just out there trying to survive um, and do whatever it takes to survive. Uh, and then just corporations are greedy and think that they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing based on whatever. And it's, it's, I, I thought it was a very good show. Yeah. So, um, perhaps at another time we'll walk through all the episodes, kind of give full thoughts. Um, but I think you have to go, right? Cause you have to like go play a, play a shooty, shooty, bang, bang. Yeah. Well, the person who's supposed to be here is really late and we haven't heard from him yet so i got time but i'm starting to think what else to say other than like yeah the show is really good but honestly this whole season just felt like a proof of concept for whatever's coming next like i feel like they're gonna go bigger and bigger with the next step with the really next season to really take it over the top and i hope they do you know like i hope yeah. we see like death, death claws and like not just death claws but cazadors and yeah the the like, the bear there the irradiated yeah, bear the, is really cool it's called the Yagu- it's called they're called the yagwai that's what they call them in um yeah and uh and uh and fallout and then the that's sea the monster with fingers in its mouth yeah a gulper yep and the well-known well-known creature of the wasteland yeah um there's also hermit hermit crabs that are the size of small cars and then they use those cars as their hermit shell as their shells so that's pretty cool too so yeah there's definitely opportunity here and hopefully they'll um you know just do better in the future and you know uh, just make it bigger like you know we saw the pridwin and stuff like that so that's a bunch of, they had a bunch of fallout 4 references in there um, so I, you know, I, I just don't know where they're going with it. We'll see what happens. Cause as far as we know, the capital wasteland is like set in stone, like that canon. Well, what, what kind of happened? Um, so, uh, but it was a good show. I really liked the set pieces. I really liked all the props. Uh, I really liked all the characters. I, even all the side characters, like it was cool seeing Fred Armisen in there. Like, you know, as like an old world DJ cause he knew exactly like what to say. That was like really funny. And that one guy didn't, you know, the travel or whatever. Did you hear him? Like that scene when they were talking about it? Did you hear about? Do you remember that part when he was like the squire was talking to that dude who was like and had that radio station? Yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, you know the treble. People don't know what that is anymore. He's like, yeah, yeah, the, the treble, man. I hate it when people don't know what the, what the treble is because he obviously doesn't know what the treble is. So. Uh, got kicked, yeah. Got kicked the, out of that. the music, yeah, the musical thing, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, also, like, so pretty much where it where it all ends is like Hank dumb fuck gets in the fucking night armor and flies to New Vegas. I'm assuming. Um, yeah. and then, uh, the ghoul is like, yo, Lucy, you want to know how I know your poppy? Come with me. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so they, uh, they, they are off on an adventure together. Um, and then Moldover dies and then the brotherhood assumes that Maximus killed her. So they make him a knight or some shit. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, uh, pretty, pretty good show. Eight episodes. Um, episode an hour long good jokes the, the first like, one was yeah, really long it was like an hour and a half yeah. i think or like something yeah. but yeah intense intensely intensely violent so not for the faint of heart yeah and also they, they you know like because of like the 1950s kind of you know illusions i guess um mm-hmm. the show feels very um eerie you know like when you have like happy music but like it's it, you juxtaposed with violence and like you know, you, you never know if someone's going to, like, try to hurt you or whatever. Um, like, you know, if they're going to try to kill Lucy. Right? Even the nice robot. The robot was very nice. And then the robot tried to steal her organs. Um, yeah. So, like, that that market thing was very interesting as well. Um, so, yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of very interesting concepts within the show. Um, and I'm sure a lot of them are taken from the, the game. Which is really cool. So, yeah, we, uh, we, we. I think that's it. I think that's everything. Yep, yep. I think we're good. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, you can click all the buttons. You can do all the things. We appreciate you. Much love. 
and we'll see you next week. I don't know what we're talking about next week. Is there anything to talk about next week? We'll figure it out. Maybe, we'll figure yeah, it out. you know, we got plenty of stuff on the horizon. So, all right. Bye. Bye.